this back end show is going to get a lot of clicks. I got a good feeling about it. Jack, you always have the best episodes, man. Yeah, yours are always high performing. I don't know what it is. I think we say we like intro the back end show every time with the same thing. <laughs> the people love me. The people love me. What can I say? You're just electric, Jack. Yeah, dude. Sure, whatever. That's that must be it. I just recently learned that you uh, you uh, got kicked out of your fantasy football league. A couple years ago, and now this is your first time back. College, yeah, sophomore year. What were you doing that kept you so busy that uh, made you not want to check your fantasy lineup? (laughs) School, I don't know. That's more important things. Oh yeah, we know that you weren't a tryhard. That's for sure. Yeah, no, I was just lazy. I don't really have an excuse. That's super lame. You're doing your radio show. Well, and my team was so good that I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll just won't change the lineup and I'll win, and that strategy worked. So you, you won, won the all? entire thing? No, but I won like the majority of the games, and mm. that uh, angered the rest of the people in my league. All right, dude. If I didn't live with Matt, it would have been fine because like he would have never known that I wasn't updating my lineup. But we would talk about it like daily. Sure. Yeah. So football's upon us. Welcome to all the listeners. What is this like? Back in show twenty eight. Yes. Okay. Back in show twenty eight, and Jack. You're football's wearing, back. yeah, football's back, and you seem to be ecstatic about it. You got it's game day for you, man. Yeah, Bears pack. Yeah, so bear down, baby. This is historically a tough day for you. Mm. What the first game of the season for the Bears? No, no. Bear, like Packers typically win or no? Uh, I mean, past few years, yeah, but no, Bears have even like when the Packers were dominant the last whatever five six years. And the Bears were horrible. Um, like, Bears won a game last year. Uh, I remember, I'll vividly remember it was, we're going into the 2019 season, so it was like 2017, 2016. They played on Thanksgiving. The Bears were just awful. They had won like two games all season. Packers were right in their prime. And <laughs> the Bears beat the Packers on Thanksgiving, which is just like the greatest thing in the world. That was a Burke, given the circumstance. That was a Burke family mar- miracle. Oh yeah, some would say. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, Were you in Kenosha with all your Wisconsin? Yeah, I was in family? Kenosha, like yeah. with all my family, all my Chicago family. Like, yeah, it was awesome. So I misspoke. It's a high emotion day because you know, win or lose depends on how you feel at the end, the result. But for you, it's always been funny listening to you. And how thankful you are to live with us, not because we're great guys, but because we're not Packers fans. Oh, my God. I couldn't stress that fact enough. Packers fans, for any marketing intern listening that isn't from the Midwest or doesn't have, like, daily interaction with a Packers fan, it's so hard to describe just how obnoxious Packers fans are. And you've come to know it being from Denver and then moving to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Like, you've seen it. Oh yeah, I'm First sure. Time. Like you had no idea when you when you lived in Denver. No clue. And now, like you can probably attest better than anyone. Oh yeah, it's been it's been a uh, eye opening experience. Packers fans are the worst. I say that confidently. Like I, I believe that to my core. They're the worst type Why is of that? fan. You gotta defend yourself. Oh, they're oh my god, they're oblivious to everything. <laughs> like there's. <laughs> Climate change. Every single off season, it's the same exact thing. You hear the same thing every off season. What were the Packers last year? They I got mean, like last in the division. Right? Five or like six they were horrible. Season. Yeah, horrible. Every season, this off season, lapped last off season, next off season for the end of time. Yeah, I think we I think we're going to be pretty good this year. It's like no, Packers are going to suck this year. Whoa. Packers are going to be takes. horrible. Hot takes. Packers are going to, I don't know about the Lions, but they're definitely going to finish behind the Vikings and the Bears. Colin, oh. Colin Cowherd says they're going to win the division. Colin, that, oh, perfect. <laughs> Colin Cowherd, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if that's the guy who's saying the Packers are going to win the division, more power to him. Yeah. Because that's the only person saying that, and that guy's an idiot. Sure. And just a little history update. Um, for those who don't know Jack Burke, uh, Jack Burke being from Kenosha. Kenosha is, uh, I want to point it out on the map real quick, Jack. It's right on the border between 
uh, or it's very close to Chicago, and it's in Wisconsin. No one's going to be able to see this. No worries. It's not a big deal, dude. Just keep pointing. See? Everyone's <laughs> looking, Jack. It's the, keep south, pointing. it's the southeasternmost city in the state of Wisconsin, uh, 45 minutes south of Milwaukee, about an hour north of Chicago, right on the right on the border. On otherwise the known as the battlegrounds between Bears and Packers fans. Yeah. Otherwise known as I have a special hatred for the Packers organization. Sure. Um, the only thing I don't like about the Packers in terms of like what the typical Packers fan always brags about, I will always give them Aaron Rodgers as like the second coming of Jesus. Like if I had Aaron Rodgers on my team, I'd be saying the same thing. Um, if Jesus looked like a bug, yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If Jesus had a brother that was on the bachelor, you know, there's all kinds of different things. If Jesus was not very inclusive with his family, sure. I would definitely. Yeah. Call if Jesus her. didn't talk to his mom. Yeah. Sure. If Jesus was like super disrespectful on Christmas and didn't buy <laughs> his own family presents, then yeah, sure. I would look think Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Okay. Anyways, go but on. anyways, like this whole title town thing irks me. They always say, like, they have, what, like, 13,000 titles, and they've been winning since players have been smoking cigarettes and drinking soda on the <laughs> sidelines, and, like, they were one of the first uh, teams, Vic Lombardi, and, 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 like, it's so ridiculous. It's like, no, like, let's keep track of Super Bowls. How many Super Bowls do they have? And, and to that, I have no idea, but they always say, like, 12 or 13 it's championships, still, No, it's right? still pretty impressive. They have, like, like, three or four Super Bowls. Oh, okay, four. that's cool. They have, how many? They have four. Okay. Because they, they had two. I think they had the first and the third. Um, don't quote me on it, but I know they had the first. I believe they had the third. And then they had one with Brett Favre and one with Aaron Rodgers. Yep. So that's four. Okay. Um. So, that, I mean, that's that's more than most. The, no, it's not the organization itself. It's the fans. They have a great history. All right, it's the fans They're having. They're set up great. They're in a gifted. little market. Yeah. They have a cool stadium. They the fans all, are the worst. The fans, are, are, they're the worst. There's no other way of putting it. Worst in sports. They should always be grateful. And the fact that they're not grateful is a, mm. is absurd. Right between Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers for the past 25 years plus, they've had two top 10 talented quarterbacks ever to play the game. Mm -hmm. And they complain like none other. One of my favorite things to do is go on social media because, like, being where I'm from, I'm friends with a lot of Packers fans on social media and follow a lot of Packers fans. Without fail, this is going back to what you were asking, like, why are Packers fans the worst? Without fail, every time the Packers lose a game, you go on social media and people are just ranting about the refs. It's, like, always the refs' fault. Without fail, almost every single loss – the Packers have ever had, and I like I have no way to really prove it right now, but you go on social media after a Packers loss, and it is just hilarious, the excuses that they come up with. So, potentially, to tonight, Thursday night, we will... Oh, uh, it'll... It'll be the refs' fault. Okay. Yeah, and we're going to go watch and then, the and then Packers fan, Investor Steve, who yells at the TV more than I do, and I yell at the TV plenty. Yeah, you have enough of your yelling on TV for sure, mm -hmm. and there's no doubt about that. Um, just to circle back, fact check, first and second Super Bowl they won, 1967-1968. Really tough to see that they didn't win the best Super Bowl, number three at 69. I think the Chiefs won that one. Chiefs beat the Vikings. Chiefs beat the Vikings, that's right. And, yeah, then 97-2011 were, were the other two. And then the other nine that they account for were all pre-Super Bowl era championships. So right, it's, Nine, big, it's so big for the organization. Ninety-seven, Brett Favre, he, he must have played like a couple years before that, and now it's two thousand, almost twenty. So that's twenty-five years plus yeah. of great quarterback play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, freaking the nuts. Packers, man. Good for them. It's great stuff, man. I yeah. love talking about the Packers. They're Nines. really good. I just really don't like them. Is there anything worse than a, in than the Packers to you? Is there anything worse out there than the Packers? Like in my own, in your own, my in life, your, in like your what own is, life, one of my least favorite things. Um, yeah, Packers are probably okay. Or Packers fans, sure, are probably number one. What's your favorite thing? Ooh, I mean, right there, right there, Bears football. That's hey, right up there. Okay. But no, I would honestly like when you asked that. My first, the first thing that popped in my head was Notre Dame football. Sure, I yeah, I can get behind that. 
Notre um, Dame football is very close to your heart. But Chicago Bears are close second. I thought you were going to say uh, Garth Brooks. I love Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks, to me, seems like your happy place. I feel like no. if you could be Garth Brooks, you'd want to do it in a Yeah, why do you think I was so happy when I saw Garth Brooks playing the first ever concert in Notre Dame Stadium? Yeah, that was like your Nirvana I to, moment. I got to like live my childhood dream of like coming out of the Notre Dame football tunnel. Play like a champion today? Did you hit it? And then, no, the locker room was locked, but I, I got right up to the door, got as close as I could. <laughs> Security guard is just looking at me, and I just had the biggest smile on my face. Um, but walked out of the tunnel and then went and saw Garth Brooks like on the field. That's epic. Doesn't get better than that, man. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I don't think. Does it get better, Andrew? Well, I don't know, man. That sounds like a pretty Nirvana moment. I yeah. mean, my, my Nirvana moment was Bocella selling my Facebook ads. <laughs> yeah, and my Nirvana moment was uh, probably stand up comedy a couple weeks ago. Nice. So. What's your just on the topic, what are your guys' least favorite things? Mm-hmm. Not to be negative or anything, but you asked me. Most, like, the, I guess I asked the question, so, like, my least favorite kind of person? No. Yeah, well, sure, maybe. I I'll, guess, I, you ask here, me? I'll go, and you can think of something. Okay. Um, the ind- indecisive people in group settings. Oh. <laughs> really, ir- really irks me. <laughs> if, if they have an opinion. And they're still undecisive. That like what? yeah, I get that. That was like you can feel that. their indis- You can feel their objection, and it's like, dude. I feel like this is really coming at me right no, now. No, not you. But um, you are indecisive. From I'm time super to time. indecisive. But you don't That'll have be a lo- my average quality today. The thing about you though is you don't have an opinion. Yeah, a lot of times I'm like I really just don't. Yeah, care. you're just a go with the flow guy. Yeah, he just wants to watch his Bears Packers game. Yeah. Yeah, you're vocal about your your um, not having an opinion versus the person that sits there and they have the opinion and you clearly are trying to figure out what they want to do. Because mm-hmm. I don't have the opinion either. I'm trying to figure out whatever else wants to do. Exactly. It's like that's what gets me irked like the Green Bay Packers talking about the refs. Got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, it would be my least favorite kind of person is just a negative person mm. because I don't really think negatively a lot, but when I'm around someone who is just naturally – ready to be negative it puts these scary thoughts into my head that i'd never think and i'm like oh man do they have some like they it, they, it they start validity? to buy yeah do they have validity it's like they're purchasing real estate without my knowledge mm-hmm. spooky spooky yeah. has that happened recently um yeah kind of i had a situation at work on friday where just like nothing was going right and this guy at work was just like basically describing how the sky was falling and I had to just remove myself from the room. It was awful. <laughs> chicken Little. Yeah, Chicken Little, dude. The sky was falling. Or it was raining meatballs, whatever children's movie you want to go with. But it was whew, kind of scary. Did you ever have the video game Chicken Little? No, I didn't. never had that one. But I had a lot of other like movie video games Shrek. that I played. Uh, Shrek I never played. I played a lot of like, Harry Potter. I played like, uh, the Star Wars Episode Three video uh, movie video game. That's a killer one. Mm-hmm. Battlefront. Battlefront, that's a great one. That wasn't necessarily from a movie, though, specifically. Uh, well, Star Battlefield, Wars. you mean? No, Battlefront. Uh, Star, Wars Star Wars Battlefront. Battlefront. Phenomenal game. Oh. Absolutely. That's like one of one of my favorites. Yeah. That was All phenomenal. time. Yeah. I would always turn on my, my own team and see if I could win. The best was when you did really well. You got a and Jedi. you got enough kills and you became a Jedi. Oh, yeah. And you started you just murking. ran around with the lightsaber and just, just destroyed everyone. Everybody. Yeah, I feel like they make those... Uh, there's some to, something to be said about like old video games, older like when we were growing up, like on the PS2, Xbox. Mm-hmm. Those games are so simple, or are much more simple than they are today. Like I can never go and pick up the new Battlefront and have a very similar experience because there's just so much complexity introduced to the games now. Yeah, I would love to see a simple game made one more time, just for my simple brain, simple positive brain. I'm with you on that. It'd be great be phenomenal but uh jack it's been a while dude it has been when's the last time you were on the show uh my little guest appearance here oh yeah that was two weeks ago ty the people have heard you the people have heard you but you haven't had to produce a podcast in in some time it's been a while yeah Mm -hmm. i mean we got you scheduled for next week that's been nice thursday but john tower i don't think you had to do one in august you took we got we gave you the break no i had a nice little hiatus there Mm -hmm. i was and thank you for that 
No problem. I feel like I got my life back in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, dude? What'd you accomplish? Oh, I don't know. I just got to go on your bike rides. Doing stuff I'd rather be doing. <laughs> Speaking of stuff that you'd rather be doing. Going on a bike ride. Like, it's a beautiful day out right now, and I'm not that I don't want to be here, but. Sure. I'd, sure, 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 I'd sure. I'd rather be on a bike ride. Yeah, but how about this? When your car broke down, you just bought a new car, so congratulations. Boy, thanks. I, when you, when you said. This is behind me, man. Yeah, I know. This is all behind, so it's all positive. Jack ends up buying a new car. I'll let Jack let you know what car it is. But when Jack lets everyone in the house know that his car broke down, I was like, look, Jack can't figure out a lot of new things. Like cooking is a struggle for Jack. Fixing the smoke detector is a struggle for Jack. There are a lot of things that are simple that are a struggle for Jack. The smoke detector is hardwired in the ceiling. All yeah, right. shut the fuck up. <laughs> So, as I was saying, buying a car, <laughs> going from a broken down car into buying an- another car, to me, seemed like an insurmountable thing for you to accomplish. I'll be honest. Thanks. I'll be honest. I was like, Jack's in for one. This could be a whole month long apocalyptic type situation for Jack Burke. So I'm I'm excited that you put it all together in Instead a week. Instead, it, like it, it, it was like a week longer. It was it was literally a week situation. Yeah, you were coming home pretty stressed during that time, I will say. But you got it done, dude. I'm very proud of you. Thanks. Very proud. You know, contrary to popular belief, buying a car really isn't that hard. You just kind of show up and you're like, I want that one. You know. Yeah. I mean, there's well, a I little. I don't know. I've never bought a car. There's a little more that goes into that, but like, it's pretty much just. Showing up and buying, any, like going and buying anything else. Yeah, it's just you a little bit more money, and it's so, a little bit more money. Yeah, I feel I feel like people overcomplicate it for sure. Yeah, but uh, what car did you end up buying? Uh, 2016 Jeep Cherokee, black on black. Wow, took it to McDonald's. Did take it to the McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. The uh, There was a guy. Remember the guy in McDonald's? He said he, he we recognized you? Yeah. I mean, I We can't talk this about this on this podcast. Yeah. We don't need to. <laughs> That's what Jack's <laughs> But what people do forget is the extra things that go along to buying a car, like car insurance. And you got to get new plates. You got to yeah. get new tags or tabs or whatever they're called. Yeah. No one teaches you this this stuff in school. Which, no, they do not. Uh, Are they supposed like, to? Like what I said earlier, yeah, it is a relatively easy process, but like there's a lot of things that go into it that aren't really told to you beforehand. What would those things be? Such as insurance, okay, tabs, license plates. Um, I don't know if I have to get a new license. I didn't do that. Um, yeah, someone was telling me that the other day. Because I have a Wisconsin license. Yeah, someone was telling me the other day, they're like, how long have you been in Minnesota for? I was like, five something, five, six years. And they're like, how do you still have a Colorado ID? And I was like, I just have one. Like, why is that? I'm from Colorado. I'm, I always want to have a Colorado license. And they're mm-hmm. like, that's not usually allowed. I'm like, what? Is that true? I still have my Illinois ID. And you have your Wisconsin. Are we violators? Uh, we got to bring in our general counsel on this one. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we're vigilantes, more or, more or less, trying to you know infiltrate our own culture into this into this Minnesota yeah. state. I bet you, like, when you have to renew it, you're just gonna renew it here. I want to go back to Colorado. I don't think you're gonna be able to because you don't have a, a home to register to, mm. unless you want to use your parents again. Yeah. And then that means your taxes. And your billing well, so yeah, I also home. feel weird, um, not to be negative again, but it's like, do I put down a, a renter's I, a address on my ID? That's it's like, strange too, right? Because it's like, that's I'm not going to live here forever. That's more why I put my parents on there. That's a good point because this is the uh, the breakup tour. This is the breakup tour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It starts on Friday. It starts on Friday, week one. Break up Can tour. you explain what the because like I don't even know what it is, so no one listening knows what the breakup tour is. So, well, that's explain, why we brought it up. Explain that. Well, twenty twenty is a big year, so 
in lieu in lieu of the big year, you have to mentally prep yourself of letting go of 2019 and all the other years prior to that. Yeah. And with that comes a breakup tour. So you must break up with what is around you and you select the various things that you're ready to let go. Cause in 2020, you got to really hone in. You got to really do it big. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening in 2020. For instance, Decky 2020. That's bottomless. Um, that one's not stopping either. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is, it's happening. Whatever it is. Oh, it's all sorts of broken up. That's what it is, dude. Um, but yeah, I mean, did I do a good job of explaining it? I think in lieu is like in replace of, so I don't know if that was the right word, but it sounded good. Oh, it, it sounded means, confident yeah. cause you like paused in lieu. You like really delivered it there. So totally. That's the first it. time I've ever heard or seen in lieu outside of like a funeral. People say in lieu of flowers, make a donation. Right. <laughs> See, in lieu is in replace, in replace. of. So you said oh. in in lieu of 2020 is the breakup tour. I don't, I don't know how you put it together, but we can run it back and, yeah, and well, laugh about it. Okay. But, um, so what it actually is, <laughs> is no, no, no. You're just adding to it. There's no, actually, there's no actually. Okay. Adding to what Andrew said. Cause he was a hundred percent accurate. Thank you. Break up with all your bullshit in 2019 and you have to, it's non-negotiable to just send it on in 2020 because of how cool it's going to sound with everything you do. Uh, with that comes, you know, our lease in this house is ending May of 2020. So when we, <laughs> uh, Matt Heron took it upon himself to address it to everybody in a, in our Uber to the Gopher game the other day, but he didn't tell any of us. He told the Uber driver. She was like, "Oh, so do you guys all live together?" Matt Heron goes, "Yeah, we all live together." Uh, she's like, "Oh, that's great. How is it funny?" He goes. Yeah, but we're breaking up. It's our breakup tour. We're not. We're all not living together after this year. We're like, what? Oh my god! So now we've called it the breakup tour, even though I don't. We don't know where we're gonna live. We don't know if we're all living together, and we don't really know where we're gonna be in May. So it's kind of this big joke of like we're all. We're. It's kind of clickbait of like, yeah, we're breaking up. We don't know. We don't want to live here anymore. But who knows I don't what's know gonna where happen? I'm gonna be next week. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing. It's like I have no. I can have no answers. I don't have any answers either. And, uh, so you guys are kicking me out. Is that what you're saying? Yes. We may be kicking ourselves out as well. So. I don't want to think about that yet. Yeah, I know. It's kind of early, right? September. Yeah. We've been living here for what? Four months out of the Second, eight. We have eight months left. Of lease number two. Yeah. Not thinking about it. Yeah. There's really not much to say other than that's that's where That's what the breakup from. tour is. That's Got what it. it is. Yeah. Right. So if we say it again, Thank that's you. what it is. I'll know. Yeah. I'll know now. Yeah, but for the record, I'll say on this podcast, I'd like to live with you again, Jack Burke. Hey, thanks. If that's uh, something you want to do. I know you don't really like me, so <laughs> it's kind of tough. Yeah, I actually hate you. Yeah, no, it's been a tough time. It's like really Packers tough. Packers fans, Declan's right there. Yeah, I'm right below. Mate, yeah. below, below or above? Uh, it's debatable. Yeah. It's tough living with you, man, because you look so similar to me, and I hate when everybody comes over and says I look like you. You finally admitted it. Pisses me off, dude. I just got a haircut at at uh, Kenwood Barber's with Paul, and he goes, Paul, and he his 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 ass was just like talking about Jack Burke and shit, and then he was like, "Yeah, you and Jack Burke have very similar hair." I was like, "God fucking damn it! Like, <laughs> I don't want to be similar to this kid. I don't. I just don't want to be it." I know. God, it's humbling. It is humbling. It's humbling realizing you're not that much better looking than me. <laughs> not that much. There you go. Well, I'm still going to give it to you because, you know, I don't want to break your heart too bad. Yeah, that's a good point. I Yeah, I think some girl is going to fall head over heel, heels for you very soon, though, Jack, and I'm very concerned about it. Hey, Bachelor Summer 19's over. There you go. Never know what's going to happen next. Hot boy uh, fall semester or whatever they're calling it. Hot, hot, boy, hot, hot girl, girl summer. summer. Yeah, what? Christian girl fall. I just saw an Instagram post about that. I don't know. Christian it girl fall. Yeah. That's hysterical. Um Yeah, dude. So I was kinda sad about the whole the whole uh um are you having trouble over there, Jack? Are you figuring it out, dude? Yeah, uh, screen went out and uh, yeah, you gotta turn it off and turn it back on probably. But anyways. Um yeah, dude, just Jack Burke looking like me, man. It's one of the the best things when a new person walks in and I and they go, you kind of look like Jack or it, it's I think that's what it is more so than Jack looks like you. 
I think it's, you it's you look like Jack more. Yeah. Well, it's just funny because Declan, like, for so long has refused to believe it. Cause refused. He, Held I, out. I don't know if he just thinks I'm ugly or what, but when people tell him that, he just <laughs> hates it. No, you don't look ugly, Jack. You're a beautiful looking guy. And like I said, some girl is bound to fall head over heels for you. Oh, I'm not fishing soon. for a compliment. I I know I look good. Oh my god, dude, you look like you're from the seventies. I saw this uh the the picture of you at uh Keely and uh John Joe Joe's wedding. Yeah. Uh, you were like being carried out like Ditko on the Super Bowl, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my God, Jack in a tux with his hair and every just and how he looks." I was like, "He could be plopped in the '70s and be like well respected in the insurance world." Still, you're timeless. I can be respected any in any world. <laughs> in any world, dude. Oh my God, you're timeless. That is that is a a feature that you hold. Thanks. Yeah, I would say proudly. That for sure. Proudly. I need to come on this podcast more. You guys are just just feed my ego yeah we gas everybody up who comes on this podcast i think that's why a lot of people like our podcast yeah that might be it or honestly. like us it's your secret sauce yeah absolutely um but anyways transitioning to average quality anything else you need to pop prop jack up with or put him down no i like jack okay nothing there mm-hmm. i okay. live with you again i want to go on record and say that yeah i'll sign you to another contract i'd live with both of you guys again okay cool cool as long as the calendar invites are sent out in advance in for advance for produ- when we're gonna for producing your podcast okay cool nice i love like getting the accepted message though with jack like accepted <laughs> and i was just sitting in my room like yeah. i put it off for like a day because i was like eh, i don't know yeah what am i gonna be doing yeah i mean this is john tower we're talking about though yeah, this is like but a- i would really like to listen to that guy talk so yeah no that's gonna be fun right on it's gonna be a blast and i'm a basketball coach too so i mean mm. yeah we have a lot in common and you and you've only been on the podcast once since we got in the, the fourth mic so uh, oh yeah so you can fully participate wow upgrade 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 city think about that but average quality here uh my average quality two two things first one's about me second one's about society nice first one is when i wear my glasses which i love wearing my glasses well let's change that you have to wear your glasses uh, instead of wearing contacts oh sure Mm -hmm. uh my the headphones push my glasses out so like i can't see very well when we podcast um, but I want to wear my glasses so I don't have to like buy more contacts and mm. I'm not doing anything athletic where I need to wear contacts right now, mm. but I've been wearing my, so I'm just going to say, fuck it and start pushing my glasses out and not see, being able to see that well during the podcast to save money. Yeah. That's, that's wow. my average quality. Great I mean, you don't really to have to money. see much. You know? Exactly. So. so, yeah, that would get testy if someone was really trying to, you know, hold the hands up and pointing at kenosha i'm pointing like pointing at kenosha i'm like sure man yeah sure i think you're right on that one are he you could, in canada yeah he could have been in quebec for all we know mm-hmm. yeah so that's my average quality as a uh, as a podcast host with headphones okay and then society average quality is i went to go grab my uh new uh laptop and go to the apple store and the people at apple i mean i don't know if you've been in an apple store recently like like purchasing something it's it's comical they are a wild bunch. I mean, you have every person in the spectrum of society inside the Apple store working there. Yeah. From like your wild and crazy person to like the suit and tie formal employee. And it's priceless. And you go up to one of them and then they like, let me go ask. And then they like go over and they're like, heard up. There's like five of them talking about this one thing that I was just like, how do I transfer my data from my old laptop? to my new laptop but i don't have enough space so i want to put on a hard drive is that possible and he's like let me go talk so then he like grabs like four apple employees who aren't doing jack shit off on the side and then they all like talk and they were talking for like 15 minutes and he comes back with like a three-word answer and i'm like all right sweet can i like you saw his email breakdown all right hard drive on three (laughs) one two three hard drive (laughs) yeah and then he must have said, make sure you use, a, you know, my name, Derek, a few times in the reference. Uh, and when I, whenever you, like, need to, like, use a fill out a form or anything, like, make sure you tell him Derek, like, helped you out on this one. And I'm like, all right, Derek. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> Derek's on the hot seat for sure. Yeah, Derek was, yeah, Derek told some other lady that she couldn't <laughs> transfer her <laughs> laptop data, that she'd lose all her contacts. Derek has some bad reviews on Google. Yeah. And, and Derek was the third person I talked to. So I, like, checked in with one person. I got the door, and she yeah. passed me to the next person who went to grab my uh, – who said he was going to go tell the person to grab my laptop. And yeah. then the third person came out with a laptop, and that was Derek. 
Oh I'm just like God. it was like Mindy to Abdul to Derek, Derek and Ud- Udkarsh. You yeah. know, there's it's all actually kinds of... super funny because I I don't think I've ever been in an Apple Store, but the whole scenario you just explained, like I pictured in my head because <laughs> South Park made an episode about it, and it, all the people come, all the what do they call geniuses? Mm. geniuses? They all they all come together. <laughs> and like do exactly what you said except the only difference is in the south park episode they like open their mouths and like uh futuristic like stream shoots out and they all touch <laughs> and they come up with the answer yeah and then he just turns around i was like okay uh so you're gonna have to transfer your hard drive yeah it was priceless, dude. So that's my. I, I, I spent 20 minutes and then I walked out with the biggest smile. Like, holy smokes. What an experience. <laughs> Can't wait to go back. Yeah. Because I got to go back and do the laptop transfer and everything. So it'll be fun. I'll oh, have, you do have to. Yeah. yeah I'm going to bring my laptop back and they do it for free where they're just going to take this because I can't turn it on. All right. Or I can't see the screen. So mm-hmm. they're just going to transfer the storage and put it on a hard drive because my la- new laptop doesn't have enough space. What do they use? The force or what? I don't know, but I'm bringing in a, my hard drive that I have and my yeah. old laptop, and they're going to fix it. They're going to figure it out. Yeah. Wow. Congrats. So that's Congrats great. on the new laptop. Congrats, you saved the dude. podcast, Andrew. I know. We could have been screwed. We can now do the podcast on our own again. Yeah. So what was that? It was a societal average quality? Mm-hmm. What was average about it? That sounded like a great experience. Yeah, just know, like, it could have been a little bit more efficient, I'm guessing, and uh, it didn't need to be all of this fugazi, fugazi. Yeah, three people. Three people experience. Streamline the process. Yes. Yeah. But it was fun. Because I was, like, like just working. standing. Like, I, I didn't move. Like, she checked me in, new person walked up, new person walked up. I stood in the same spot the whole time. Sure. Did you have to sign up beforehand, or did you walk in as, like, a, a, a walk-in? Uh, email came in and said, your laptop's ready to pick up. Oh, that's right. Okay. Got it. And then when you picked it up, that's when you had your question. Yes. Got it. Okay. Which I should have brought my laptop in, but I forgot it. So then I have to go back. Now. Sure. The, uh, I've always, the only times I've really been in an Apple store is like when I, my phone or my, at the time my iPod touch was compromised and you walk in there and everybody else's iPhone and iPods are also broken. And like, again, these genius people, like a, they need each other first off (laughs) and B you need, you can't, they hate walk-ins. This is not a minute clinic by any means for your phone. No, it's not an Applebee's. It is not an Applebee's. Yeah. There's no places to, uh, for two to sit down and have a nice meal. This is some half price apps. Yeah. None of that, dude. It's ridiculous. And all it is, you're going to seven steakhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Seven steakhouse. You're not getting dollar bahama mamas here no and there's no two for one deals or even two for 20 deals no none of that in 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 an apple store Hmm. so you always have to like sign up beforehand as if like you are in like you're willing to wait another three days without your phone or knowing what your the problem with your phone is and it literally every time you go in there it's they troubleshoot it the same way any normal person would troubleshoot it like they just turn it on doesn't work turn it off wait a couple seconds turn it back on yeah it looks like your phone's broken uh it's gonna cost you 300 for a new screen you're like oh well that's great phenomenal great yeah. great oh my god but yeah that's that's my experience that was your iphone sure. touch yeah or i touch rather ipod touch yeah ipod touch I think that's what they call them right oh yeah man the geniuses and it's so sleek in there like T- taylor swift was on every screen. I don't know if she bought like a marketing package where she's going to be on every Apple store, but every saving screen of every phone, every laptop, every Apple wristwatch thing, majigger, desktop, you name it, Taylor Swift was on them all. Same good, picture. Good for her. It was crazy. You know? Like that's genius. And the genius. 2019 part. and Taylor Swift is just still everywhere. That girl just doesn't go away. Just like you, Jack. Timeless. Timeless, Timeless dude. We should go in there and change all the desktop screens to the back pocket desktop background. <laughs> I would, I, I might pay Piff like twenty bucks to do a, uh, to do one of those. I don't know if you follow him on TikTok, but he does like these uh, uh, conspiracy theories. Oh yeah, and I want one those with are, Taylor Swift and Jack Burke. <laughs> Timeless, dude. Some like pathway he gets to create it. Yeah, oh, man. he's got way too many followers for me to feel comfortable with that. <laughs> Maybe we have him do something with the back pocket. That'd be fun. Yeah, maybe. We should no, get I need him Jack Burke, dude. No, we no. can get Jack Burke in there too. There's so much public information <laughs> out there <laughs> about life, just like in this podcast alone. But just yeah, from, are you from the, what the back pocket has done? 
have we like shambled your name? Have we like? No, made- by no means. But there's just a lot. There's a lot of people that I don't know who know a lot of personal information about me. I'll just say that. That's fair. That's a great point. Mm-hmm. And you don't want that. Like up in, like even things that don't matter. Like what irks me, what my average qualities are. Yeah. Right. The kind of people I hate. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for uh, the, the fact that I like to go on bike rides after work. Loves it. Yeah. yeah. Right. More than most. Yeah. Um, but I can't wait for Jack's little kids to listen to these. I was actually thinking about that recently. I was like, because you, I have a fascination with like what my parents and like grandparents did before I knew them. Same. And now we have, even just like with social media now, it'll be super interesting, our generation growing up and seeing um, how we can like share our social media or things like this, things like a podcast with our children and our children's children. I think that's like, I don't know what it's going to look like. Or yeah. There's almost like an entire medium. Yeah. Mm. Waiting. Waiting mm-hmm. for it. And I'm super curious what like kind of process or app or whatever is going to hold all that information to make it super accessible to us. Because there's going to be so much data mm-hmm. on every single person. If like we might just be covered up in 25 years, like this stuff might not be, you couldn't even be able to find it because there's so much out there yeah. or there's someone who's creating this app right now. It's going to have like everything streamlined. When you type the word in Burke, you get all this stuff. And then you give Jack Minneapolis 2019 and, and it gets the back pocket podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be crazy. Well, I feel like that already exists in Google. <laughs> like if you type my name in, if you typed all those things in, like this podcast would probably come up. Sure. But I'm just like, how many articles does it take to get to 2000 even 10 like i see there's just when you type in something and you, you have to type to get to page like 10 before you get to stuff that happened six years ago yeah could you type in the year you then want maybe even the year sure. you want. yeah there's probably search engines for it yeah that. i'm more um curious on how our like all of our data for the most part's unprotected and public right now yeah, but what will happen if there's a turn where it's like private all of a sudden where like no like google can't have your location or this and that and the other but you can still operate on facebook and still do everything the same but it's all private now i wonder how that would change yeah that's like saying what would happen if all of the land out here became public like i don't know yeah i yeah seriously i I have no idea but it is it would i would love to speculate it's so fun to speculate i and it's fun to live your life that way a little bit where it's like you're just you're living authentically what doing whatever you want and now that is captured and saved for don't quote me on it but forever and we're talking in 20 years you get have your kids can get reminded of snapchat story or like <laughs> oh, snapchat man. stories of you from 25 <laughs> years ago can you imagine dude in all seriousness like that's why I'm so excited for all future presidential races <laughs> from here on out because <laughs> like we already saw no what happened safe. the last presidential election yeah like with the whole you know i won't have to repeat our current president's former words but like everyone knows what he said on the bus for with the tmz interview sure. and, and you're, and you know what i'm talking oh, about yeah. right yeah Grabber by the we don't need to say it on the podcast no but, no, no we don't need to go there we're a clean podcast. Yeah. Like the fact that that stuff is, has already happened just means it's only going to snowball from here. Cause I'm not saying like every future presidential candidate has like a dirty past and like has horrible Snapchats and things out yeah. there, but like the chances are only going to get higher. Exactly. Right. I'll exactly. Say that. There's, there's got, there's going to be something that's either priceless, like super funny or something that could get them in trouble. Yeah. It's guaranteed. Yeah. It, it but also at the same time, it shows how much like people really don't care that much. Well, yeah, that too, right? Because that set a precedent, and it's like, especially with Trump, like, yeah, like the first time something like that ever happened on like a a large scale, the, the person still got elected. So yeah, turned out wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> turns hey, out everyone anything goes, <laughs> anything goes, dude. Oh my god, that's why I I really hope it just opens the floodgates for like. Not that I want celebrities to be presidents, but oh my god, dude! Well, that's what I just said. Like, I'm super excited that'd to be, see all, so all the messed up stuff that people have done in their 
best. Yeah, who's also digging all this stuff up, by the way? <laughs> There's so many freaking journalists that are just scrolling through. Anyone on Twitter. People are so passionate yeah. about politics that they'll do anything to, like, ruin someone else's life. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's, wh- that's how with. I feel about Twitter, though. Like, you, you politics, sure, but then everyone on Twitter, that's not only politics, but they're, anyone active on Twitter is, like, ready to, to trash someone. Yeah. That's like the culture of Twitter. It blows my mind. Yeah. I just started getting back into it. And it's just kind of like super like just shitting on everyone. Extreme. Pe- people yeah. are mean, man. People are mean. People are also hilarious on Twitter. <laughs> sure. I absolutely. love it. For, I, yeah. I do miss Twitter for that, for that reason alone. Dalia had this funny post the other day, or it might even been on his podcast where it was a clip of it. And he was just like, uh, if anyone's trying to, to cancel me, come for me. I'm a comedian. I'm good. <laughs> I'm cleared or something like that. And I was just like, yeah, I wish I like, I'm just going to claim I'm a comedian all the time. And yeah. then it's always a joke. Yeah. And then when you're a comedian with one joke and trying to be a comedian, you're going to get canceled a thousand times before you, before you're good. <laughs> or a comedy podcast. Yeah. At least we have ourselves covered there. Exactly. We'll never get canceled with when we always tell ourselves is comedy. Yeah. It's and a safe. It, any future like hypothetical job interview I might have like, Mr. Burke, tell me about this. Uh, these comments that you said here on this podcast. Oh, it was a comedy podcast. Don't worry. Oh, about exactly. I said it on a comedy yeah. podcast. A po- don't comedy worry about podcast. that. Yeah, don't worry about. I was that. just being funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were just <laughs> horsing around, sir. Don't worry about that. Locker room talk. Locker room. Yeah. <laughs> that was just locker room talk. That was just back pocket podcast talk. Yeah, and you know what? Back pocket podcast talk always circles the wagon with the average quality. So, Jackie Burke, what is your average quality? Well, Declan already mentioned, like, three of mine earlier. Uh, what, what were they? Your average Cooking. Uh, Cooking, fixing <laughs> the smoke fixing detector. Fixing the smoke detector. Just uh, making, uh, taking on. Uh, indecisiveness. Mm. Damn, we really did circle the wagon yeah. on your life. So, I think we got enough. Nice. Do you have any others that we missed? Uh, the one I was planning on saying was uh, focus, distraction. Mm. Um I really struggle with focus, so I I need to do a better job fixing that. Yeah, you were sitting uh, on your phone, um, maybe it was your laptop, in the living room the other day, and you're like, I think I have ADD. I think, yeah. I think that's what you, – you, you, you verbalize that claim. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's like – it's humbling to admit because it's, like, it's actually kind of a serious problem. Sometimes I'll be sitting at work and, like, 20 minutes will pass, and I'm just like, shit, like – I've just been rereading this email and nothing has happened. I don't want to say 20 minutes, but like, you know, sometimes you just like, wait, what, what was I just doing the last little while? You know? Mm. Um, Focus, man. Yeah. yeah. I catch myself in those situations. Sometimes if I'm just like on my phone scrolling, I'll just get lost in like a rabbit hole Mm -hmm. and then I'll look up and be like, that was the dumbest five minutes of my life. Well, sometimes I just daydream. Like, Oh sure. I'll like be in the middle of a task, but then I'll get distracted by a thought. Dude. And run with the thought, and then chase those dreams. Uh, I I am a dream chaser, but like, got to stay focused sometimes. Sure, got to stay focused at, with the task at hand. You know what was not average though, Jack? Is your summer this this uh, this twenty nineteen? It was an above average summer. You really uh, got after it. We barely saw you on the weekends. I know, which is uh, no fault of your own. Uh, is that if that's the right saying? I don't know. I've been a lot of people it. like you. Exactly, and. Um, you cro- you did a lot of things, Jack. You planned well, and I think you see it's your 2019 summer. Yeah, it was a good one. You and went to Colorado by yourself. Yeah, yeah that was May. Does that count? Uh, was yeah. that after Memorial Day? Sure. Um, wait, it no, was. No, it wasn't. It was yeah, May. It was, the, it was Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Uh, maybe not summer, but close enough. Yeah, two bachelor parties followed by two weddings. Um, Rolling Stones concert between the two bachelor parties. A week at home that. That whole week. A couple cabin trips. Oh, man. I have just got really lucky with my friends because people just love inviting me to their cabin. And anyone listening that has a cabin and considers themselves my friend, I'm always available. Just saying. And that goes for me as well. Do not hesitate <laughs> ever, ever to uh, invite me. If, you're, if, if you see me as a valuable guy yeah. at your cabin, a valuable addition, because I don't want to be invited if I'm not valuable. Mm-hmm. Cause then it just gotta bring value. Yeah. That thing is that. Yeah, like three or four different cabin weekends, different places, family vacation. But you focused on that though. Is 
is really what I am starting to see is you came in, you know, spring, April time. You're like, I'm going I'm to have a kick ass summer. Yeah, I'm booked, guys. You said that like 80 times. We're like, sick, dude. So are we. But it turned out you were actually. I was actually booked. booked. Yeah, dude. It was a bender. Very yeah, impressive. I was, I was gone like every weekend but two in like three months. It was crazy. But wow. here we are. Fall is here. Football's back. Football's back, dude. So excited. Da bears. How yeah. about you, Deck? All right. Average quality for me is um, thinking the worst or like having the worst assumptions to things that probably don't have uh, don't need to be thought in that in that light. Mm. Um, example, please. A, a good lighthearted example would be um, if you're like talking to a girl or something, you text her. And it's just like, you know, I'm always dicking around. So you always throw around some funny shit on uh, over text or DMs and they read receipt you. Then my mind will jump to the worst assumptions like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe I said that. Like, she probably thinks I'm an idiot. I should have never even, you know, it's like regret. You think like she hates you or something like she'll never talk to you again. And then, like, she'll respond later, or it's just never a bit. It always blows over. Yeah. Um. So that's, like, a good relatable example. Where I picked up on the average quality was, like, the data and the analytics we get, like, specifically from back pocket. It just gives you a number. Like, we know that, like Andrew said a couple of weeks ago, 300 people listen to the back end show after, like, a week or 10 days. You're that's, welcome. And that's all we know. Yeah, because of Jack Burke. But then when like downloads fluctuate up and down from week to week, my mind is like, oh my God, did all the listeners leave? Did we piss them off? What did we do? What did we do right that we're not doing now? Like we do so much all the time Mm -hmm. that I really never know. And it's really hard to pinpoint. There's no control variables. There's really no control variables to figure it out. So now I'm just like, fuck it. Who cares? Like it's Um, not a big deal. (laughs) I have a pretty good guess over here. Okay. Jack Burke. Um, yes. I think your guest makes a big difference. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And that's the biggest controlled variable. Yeah. Absolutely. Have a good guest, people will listen. That's pretty much it. Pretty much as simple as that. Yeah. It's just interesting. You can do all the same things every week. Yeah. You have uh, Joe Schmo out over here. No one's going to listen. You have John Tower next week. People you're going to get some big numbers. Yeah. No, I think you're right in that sense. Absolutely. I guess there's more and underlying things that I think about on top of that. Yeah, different people have different interests. But ultimately, you can be you can do all the numbers and break things down and different promotions and all that. But I honestly think it just comes down to the guest and the, the value of the conversation. Right. Absolutely. But then at the same time. In my humble opinion. Yeah. And and the more of those that you have on, then the more people will stick around with you. Because that's always my like. Yeah. It's it's just hard to get on like really big names all the time. I agree. So I, I understand. Yeah, that's. But I also want to create and an, like we want to create a platform that just like people continue to in, invest in or engage with because it's like us. You know, mm-hmm. that's why I love doing the back end show. It's just like us, m- me and Andrew, a friend, an intern. You know, whoever whoever it may be. Mm-hmm. Like that's the. That is kind of the core that I appreciate every week is the people really do come back for us. That's mm-hmm. why maybe that is a good controlled variable is this back end show. So, yeah, it's just interesting when you see like a, when you see like Carly Zucker and Claire Cott releasing the same week and Claire gets more downloads than Carly. No, Carly surpassed. Claire Carly. Again. Yeah. Carly ended up getting a little bit more, but it's interesting when like your friends like Cavi Brennan or any of the, the, uh, of our good friends have been on their on the podcast when those guys downloads get more than yeah like a famous dave or a steve shustler yeah it's it, and we've talked about this andrew and i have but it's just like there's value in different people all the time mm-hmm. which is cool and different people have different opinions and interests so yeah and you're only going to grab so many every single week just how it is man yeah don't over assume uh when you assume you make an ass out of you and me you and me mm-hmm. so you can't be doing that no you cannot yeah um, but I'm learning. But I am learning. I'm trying. Um, and speaking of learning, what did you learn, Andrew? Uh, what I learned is over the past now, I think it's just been a full week since week zero of college of football. football. Yeah. 
We've uh, we've invested in an NCAA 14. We've invested some heavy time and effort into it. Yes. And I'm winless right now against Decky. I came super close. The last two games, I blew it um, and got scored on or kicked a field goal at the end of both of those games to lose. In the last possession, I left too much time on the clock the last game. And then the one before that, I uh, had a turnover on downs um, going forward on fourth down. It's tough, man. Instead of kicking the 55-yard field goal that I, I now know you can kick – the, the arcade mode can can kick those um so i'm getting better and i'm learning and i'm figuring it out i'm adjusting and going and when i don't play deck i beat everyone but when i play deck he's my kryptonite so what yeah. i learned is i'm having a blast trying to figure out decky's freaking brain inside ncaa because he's played that game so many times he's definitely got like more experience in like the button controls but i'm, I'm figuring them out hey. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna beat him at least he could throw a pass on him without it getting intercepted that's very true, Jack. Oh, yeah, two passes, two interceptions. Is yeah, that and that's you, another every time and I quit. Play, every time I play that grid, it's I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. You threw two pick sixes back to back on your first two plays, and you just quit after that. Yeah, and Joe's like, okay, all right, so I get it. For a little context for the uh, the marketing interns, Declan's uh, Xbox 360 still has uh, NCAA 14 on it, and he downloaded the recent rosters, and it's got all the stats and all of the players and all the coaches and playbooks that you can name. <clears throat> up to date and it's the funnest thing because that game actually has some um high quality uh features where it doesn't feel dated the graphics are a little dated but the the gameplay itself is not dated where mm -hmm. the buttons you click and how the players shift and everything there's is still actually, skill involved there's a lot of skill involved yeah yeah it, yeah, it plays like with the play calling and all the stuff all the adjustments the buttons mm -hmm. that is, makes it feel more strategic and then the game plan in general, like it, it does allow you to like a good player is noticeably better. Put it that way. Yeah. Um, but the computer, when you play on Heisman, the computer, the the algorithms just got really good overnight and they just pick you off all the time. It's wild. And as he says that, uh, I just got to give some more context for our marketing <laughs> interns. It's, it's third and six, two minute, two seconds left in the game. I'm up by four. And I throw a bluff cover three and uh, roll the cover two because Declan's just been killing me down the side, down the hashes. How much time is left? Two, two seconds. seconds. And he's on the 30-yard line. Can we back up a little bit? And you bit? lost the game? Yeah, wait. Hold on. Let's back up again. Yeah. So. Who's Neil the ball? No, he has the ball. Oh. Yeah. So I had the ball. I was running the clock out with two minutes left. My running back, I ran it three times. And on the, my third run, I'm like. Pass the, pass the first down already. I get hit and fumble on my own 28. Andrew recovers. Andrew then drives the uh, the 28 yards he needs and scores with 27 seven seconds left. So I had the ball in three timeouts with 27 seconds. Uh, move the ball from, like, my 25 down to, like, the 41 with nine seconds left. Uh, Four-point lead. Four-point lead, Andrew. So you have to score. Yeah, so it's 28-24. I then uh, threw in a little read option play because I knew Andrew was going to be playing super back so I could run and get a ton of yards and then slide call timeout. So I did just that. I got like 23 yards. I'm on like my uh, 24 now. Two seconds left. Andrew. And I throw the bluff cover three, roll the cover two because he's been beating me down the hashes. And my, my, see, my computers did exactly what they should do. And as a user, I went to the middle of the field because that's where my biggest weakness is. My safety turns dead sprint to Declan's guy running down the hash and doesn't turn around and runs past the receiver, and Declan scored a touchdown. So I called the right coverage, but my CPUs failed me, and Declan beat me. It's a heartbreaker, Ryan. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I just sat there, and I watched the replay like seven times, just like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> you're, you're telling me I'm on Heisman, and, and these computers are supposed to be playing at this caliber, and this is the time they choose to take a break? Had me fooled. Dead to rights. Literally should never have thrown that ball, and boys came out on top. <laughs> now, and now I'm over six or whatever. Yeah, know, whatever right. it is. But I've lost track. I've lost so many times. The fact that you're... Right there, though, it just gets me so excited because now we're just going to have really good games. Like, I'm not walking yeah. into the game where I'm playing Jack Burke and it's like, okay, this will be 13 minutes and it'll be over. You know, yeah. it's not, it's no fun in that. I love the competition. So, mm -hmm. congrats it. to you. I'm having fun. It's a small win, it's a small victory. You know, Andrew's having fun when he's telling like his brothers, his dad, like anybody sitting to, the, to his left about these games that he's having against me or Matt Heron and how much better he's getting at the <laughs> game. It's, yeah, I love it. It's yeah. the best thing ever. 
Uh, I, and new people that walk in, I'm like, you want to play? And, I, and play. I beat them. I beat Joe Young. Smokes them. I beat Jordan Roberts. I beat Matt Heron. You bring new people that come in. I'm better than them now. Yeah. Um, but I can't beat the reigning champ of Declan. Even though Matt got him, that pissed me off even more. You're right. Yeah. There. The shootout. Matt Matt Heron's just good at video games in general, though. But so. I beat him. You did beat him twice. You'll get there. I know. I'm should working on it. Breakup tour uh, week four. We should have a tournament. Sure. 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 Something to think about there. Uh, what did I learn? I learned that LeBron James is trying to trademark Taco Tuesday. Ridiculous. You guys hear about that? Yeah. So dumb. For this who's why, gain? Like what? He has been saying it over social media. I don't know if you follow him on Instagram or I whatnot. Don't. He's been saying Taco Tuesday for the past like month and a half. And he says it like, it's Taco Tuesday. And he's got this weird face and everything. And he's it's the whole LeBron on, ins- on like any social media. It's so like, he's all doing? about that vino still or not? Could could be with tacos, but he takes a video of a taco and then he flips the camera around him and he does this Mexican accent and he screams out Taco Tuesday and he does like the, ay, 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 all that stuff. And it's so racist. So racist. Yeah. And uh, and he in this week he tried to trademark it and like create a whole <laughs> marketing ploy on it and they shut him down. That, and there was a funny bit about it. Like, what are you trying to trademark Happy Hour Friday as well, buddy? Yeah. Like, come on, dude. Know your role, do your role. Know your role, do your role, LeBron. You can't be – what kind of? how much more money are you trying to make? Yeah. You're a billionaire. Close to it, at least. Here's the official video. Yeah. So fucking Put dumb. it close to the mic. Thinking about – because y'all know what today is. Taco Tuesday. What? Tacos are the easiest freaking – food to make come on man why do we need a trademark congratulations that? lebron yeah god this is why the nba will never be as good as the nfl did you hear what andrew schultz said wonton wednesday wonton wednesday <laughs> <laughs> now that i can get behind <laughs> if we're gonna buy or if we're gonna trademark our own little caption to a day what day would it be i like monday so let's just be better than everyone else on monday right yeah what do we call it though? Motivation Monday? No. I don't know. Man spread Monday. <laughs> That's us, baby. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Trade market, boys. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I gotta edit that one. All right, dude. God. All right, Jack. All right. What'd well, you learn, dude? First off, we're all canceled from that little we just friend. flashed our do that on Twitter and you're you're gonna get banned. You're praised. Yeah. No, you're no, banned. no, no. No, you do this on Twitter, you get praised. You do this on Instagram, you get canceled. I think it's the other way around. We're getting really? canceled. Yeah. Or I think we're getting, yeah, who knows. Um, I learned I learned today uh, Ken Burns is releasing a new documentary September 15th, PBS. Uh, his, it's just called Country Music. And he's just doing it's this. It's like the, the entire in. history beginning to current day country music. The and zoom in effect on all of it? Yeah, I don't know. The There's going to be a lot of Ken Burns effects, but I am ecstatic. I don't know how I missed it for so long, seeing as it comes out like next week. He mm-hmm. did the World War II one, right? Uh, Vietnam, the Vietnam. last Vietnam, which was just phenomenal. If anyone listening has not watched that yet, watch it because it is unbelievable. Um, and I, I mean, the president is set high. The guy is so talented, and now there's this new documentary coming out country music so i'm i'm stoked sign me up when you're ready to watch that just let me know and i'm gonna come down and i think it's like every sunday night for like eight weeks and that'll lead up right to uh nick saban and bill belichick on hbo oh my gosh perfect oh what's that one h they have like a documentary they're making out. a documentary oh december 10th dude like together sick. just about how they're the best how they're both dominant there yeah the evil villains of football frick yeah oh, that gets me stoked I'm, I'm very excited about that yeah it'll be good what other – yeah, so you said Ken Ken Burns did Vietnam. What other ones is he famous for? Uh, that's, like, the only one I've really watched. Then why does he get, like, a, a very popular and generic transition named after him? Video transition. Because probably he mastered it. Or there was a different Ken Burns. No, that's him. He's very famous in the documentary world. And he's made two? No, he's made a lot. Okay. I was just, just curious if there were any other notables. Um – There's a lot. There's a lot. Any notables? Any any ones that are catching your well, eye? Well, they're all like 
Um, <laughs> They're all pornos. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Burns is famous for pornos. The national parks. Um, Central Park Five. I don't know what that is. Um, the so, West. New York. Wow, this guy. I, they're really very, they're informative. Informative. Dang. Dang. Historical. This guy sounds like an encyclopedia. Yeah. Let's get Ken Burns on the podcast. That. That would be lit. That would help downloads. Yeah. That's Absolutely. a quality guest. It's a quality guest. Um, feel good story. Anyone got any? I got one. Okay. Uh, Monday night, my beloved Notre Dame Fighting Irish uh, were playing Louisville. They played horrible. Louisville. Louisville. They were Louisville. playing Louisville. Louisville. And when in, in the fourth quarter, starting quarterback Ian Book uh, runs out of options, throws the ball away, just hucks it down the field, goes out of bounds, it just nails a Louisville cheerleader in the face. Like, in the face. Hard. She turns around at the worst moment and just gets pelted. Throws her pom-poms down, like, runs off the field. It was ugly. And we and um, we were both <laughs> watching it. We were the only ones up left in the house, and we just looked at each other and started dying laughing. <laughs> oh, it was bad. It was really <laughs> funny, but it was bad. Like, you felt bad Did you guys girl. see what happened? And then, yeah, so, feel, feel good story is she starts trending on Twitter and social media and things, and... Um, she posted a meme about it, like the SpongeBob. I I'm gonna head out meme. Like she she owned it. And she embraced it. Yeah, good for her. Um, but Ian Book actually sent her a direct message on Instagram, um, Same. apologizing afterwards. So that's my feel good story. Is you know the guy owned up to his actions, even though they weren't weren't really his fault, and he felt bad for the girl. I mean. And uh, he showed his appreciation for her and uh, or his concern for her, rather. And uh, just put a smile on my face when I read that. Yeah. Elizabeth Scott is her name. Yeah. And she is great looking. And now she has broken nose, it says. So that's tough. But that's pretty awesome that she, that all that went down. Yeah. Maybe we should. Uh, Let's send her flowers. Her, maybe we could get her on the podcast. Maybe we can get her on the podcast. I think that would be good. And ask downloads. her about what it's like. Um, to get hit in the face by a football. She has to get surgery. She like she has to see a specialist because yeah. it's so bad. Yikes. When you so hopefully she's still beautiful. Um, everyone knows when you turn around, you plant that foot, and you get your head around quick. Get your hands ready. Everyone knows that. She had pom-poms in her hands. Her hands were full. All right? She was busy. She doing claims she was looking at – she was watching the game on the big screen. I could, Which uh, is, this is a valid argument. Yeah. So she claims she's, like, looking up at it, and then she heard everyone yelling, like, watch out. And when she heard them yelling, watch out, she turned, and <laughs> at that very moment just got rocked. And it's like a 70-yard bomb. Like, Ian yeah. really put some heat behind it. Yeah, but the, the guy comes around, and he apologizes. He didn't have to do that. That's think, a good feel-good story. Yeah, yeah thank you, Jack. Feel good story. I felt good when I read it. Yeah, so. way to wrap that one up. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Elizabeth Scott. You know where to find us. We'd love to have you on. At Elizabeth Scott at uh, the back pocket podcast. Yes, and the Scott though the O is a zero. So just oh. make sure you guys keep note of that. Um, next Liz, week, Liz, we'd love to have you. Liz, yeah, I'm sure she goes by Liz, right? Yeah. Do you think she has a southern accent? Chances she has a southern accent. Uh, I've been to Louisville, and it's a hodgepodge of accents. So. And there's Midwestern. There's it's a melting pot over there. Yeah, it's it's weird. Accents are weird there, so I, I can't say I. No, I read today she's from Indiana, so there's a very strong chance Southern Indiana accents are kind of prevalent. Twangy. Yeah. Twangy. Well, all right, next Elizabeth. Week. Next Sorry, week. Next week. What do we got next week, Jack? Johnny Tower. Uh. One-time national championship coach. He was an assistant for the first one. Um, University of St. Thomas uh, head men's basketball coach. Um, he's also a got his PhD, Doctor John Tower. Yes. Um, in philosophy, I believe. No. Yeah. Philosophy, or is it? Yeah, um, it's philosophy. Psychology. Oh, philosophy. I'm pretty sure. Okay, and he's a professor at St. Thomas. Um, full-time teacher and basketball coach. Uh, and he's an author. He has, I think, a best-selling book about um, coaching your children in sports. Um, the guy is just a rock star in life. 
Uh, I had the opportunity a few times when I was working um, for the school newspaper in college to, I was like a sports reporter, interviewed him after, during the national championship uh, season, uh, interviewed him on multiple occasions. And the guy is just, he's a stand up class act. I couldn't speak any higher about him. Sweet. So he's not technically on Monday, but he's the following Monday. So that was a great intro. We actually have Maggie Kendall next week. Very excited about her pro wake surfer, followed by Jay Christensen the next day. Are you sure? Positive. Yes. Uh, you can just this gets released tomorrow. You yeah. can edit it. In the no, right, no, no, no. But right John, way. but we, the more hype we can build for John Tower, the the better. Everything that you described, all his accolades, are all in his signature of his email. His signature of his email is literally you would have to scroll. It's probably three iPhone pages worth of actual signature. And those it's are insane. always annoying, but. He deserves it. He his, earned it. His is a he earned it pano sure. shot of the St. Thomas Basketball Stadium with every single year that they've won a championship, which is like at least 20 of them since 1940. And then it has like the book and like <laughs> that's everything awesome. else. Oh, that it's phenomenal. Is, that is, uh, that's BDE it's right It's rich, there. dude. BDE. But anyways, as always, this is the end of this podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. We got back in show 28 next week with uh, 29. 29. 29, yeah. With uh, Matt Heron and Jeremy Molina. It's going to be a freaking blast. But until then, we will, I love you guys. Take care. Take care. <laughs>